The House has voted to hold former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in contempt of Congress. The recommendation now heads to the Justice Department, where officials will determine whether to pursue criminal charges against former President Trump's ally. This all comes after Meadows refused to appear for his scheduled deposition last week before the panel. On Monday, the committee revealed a series of texts that Meadows received from GOP lawmakers, journalists, and even members of Trump's family on the day of the riot, pleading for Trump to call for peace. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell was asked about members of his party reaching out to Meadows on that day. We're all watching, as you are, what is unfolding on the House side. And it um, will be interesting to reveal all the uh, participants who were involved. Nicole Killian joins me now from Capitol Hill with the latest on this story. Nicole, great to see you. Uh, let's jump right in. The recommendation will now head to the Justice Department. The agency has already charged Steve Bannon with two counts of contempt. How significant would it be if the DOJ brought charges against Meadows? Well, good to see you as well, Elise. I mean, obviously, it would be very significant. Was significant when they uh, indicted Steve Bannon, so it would be equally significant if they indicted uh, Mark Meadows, who uh, really is the first former White House chief of staff to face potential criminal charges since the Watergate era. So, uh, look, uh, it's important to keep in mind that these are different cases. Uh, both Bannon and Meadows have argued executive privilege as one of the reasons that they uh, are not cooperating with the committee. But in Bannon's case, he didn't show up for death. Positions. He didn't provide documents. And in claiming executive privilege, he hadn't worked at the White House for years. Uh, so when he was uh, around the former president around January 6th, you know, it was more as a private citizen in his personal capacity, not so much as an official advisor like Mark Meadows, who was serving at the time as a uh, former President Trump's chief of staff. So that's why he does argue that he has some protections uh, in terms of executive privilege, particularly when it comes to his conversations uh, with the former president and his his legal team has argued that he has been cooperating with the panel. Otherwise, he wouldn't have turned over all of those documents. But that being said, the committee has made clear that, you know, if he can do that, he should be able to sit and answer questions about them. And so, uh, you know, after a stalemate, uh, that's why the House moved forward with this contempt vote. And uh, again, Meadows saying just last night that he hopes he gets a fair shake uh, from the Justice Department. So, Nicole, conservative activist Dustin Stockton, who promoted rallies leading up to January 6th, sat for an interview with White House panel yesterday. Do we know what was discussed? Yeah, so we sat down with Mr. Stockton uh, and his attorney, and, uh, you know, he sat down with the panel for hours, uh, close to about seven hours, and uh, said that, uh, you know, really for him, this was about trying to fill in the blanks. And while he wasn't a primary organizer for that rally on the Ellipse January 6th, as you mentioned, he did organize a series of rallies right after the election, as well as a bus tour, uh, all culminating in that rally uh, on January 6th. And so he said uh, that he actually expected the former president to give a concession uh, at that uh, January 6th rally uh, and was really uh, taken aback when things took a turn for the worse uh, when uh, those uh, demonstrators started moving towards the Capitol. But uh, he said that, you know, in terms of his conversations with some of the organizers, uh, with, uh, you know, members of uh, the administration and Congress, those are some of the uh, documents and details that he turned over to the panel. Now, the January 6th House Committee has more depositions scheduled for this week. Who will they be speaking to and, and why are these people significant in this investigation? Well, you know, the committee has uh, gotten cooperation from over 300 witnesses, and so there are some uh, significant individuals who are expected to meet with the panel this week. The main one we're going to be watching is Jeffrey Clark. Uh, he, too, has had some back and forth with uh, the panel in the sense that, uh, you know, he... Uh, also is an individual who is facing a prim potential criminal uh, contempt charges. The select committee has already voted to hold him in contempt, but they're kind of giving him one last chance to try to appear uh, before moving to a full House vote. And this is somebody who was a Trump loyalist, uh, who at one point the former president had considered installing as his acting attorney general because he was uh, sympathetic to the president's uh, 
desires and inquiries about potentially overturning the election. So uh, he is due to appear uh, later this week where he's expected to plead the fifth. Uh, there are a number of other, you know, former uh, White House officials who are due to be deposed. Some of them have been uh, postponed. Uh, you know, others uh, may still take place. Uh, you know, it's kind of a day-to-day -day situation in terms of who shows and who doesn't. Yeah, Nicole, let's go ahead and switch gears just a bit. Both the House and the Senate voted to raise the debt limit last night. The bill now heads to President Biden's desk for his signature. What more can you tell us about this and how close did the U.S. government come to defaulting on its bills? Well, you know, it came a lot closer back in uh, the fall because at that point, really, uh, Democratic and Republican leaders were at a standoff. Uh, you know, neither side was budging. And at that point, we really did seem like we were on the verge of uh, no resolution until uh, at the 11th hour there was this compromise between Mitch McConnell and Leader Schumer. This time around, you know, they started conversations early and were able to come up with this agreement to raise the debt ceiling by about two and a half trillion dollars and so that that will uh, in essence uh, kind of extend the limit uh, past the midterms uh, but you know the question has been raised you know we'll be back at this again in in just over a year so how prudent is that but at least for now uh, you know this does stave off any potential economic crisis and certainly Treasury Secretary uh, Janet Yellen had been clear that without congressional action it could cause catastrophe uh, for the economy whether that's the law of millions of jobs, an uptick in the unemployment rate. So uh, fortunately, don't have to worry about that at this time. Nicole, meanwhile, President Biden is also hoping that Congress will pass his social spending package before Christmas yesterday. Uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki addressed the latest conversations happening around the Build Back Better Act. Let's listen. What we're talking about now does not look like his original proposal. Uh, so there's already been a significant amount of compromise. He's come down in numbers in some of the areas that were in his, his original proposal. Uh, and uh, he's comfortable with that because he knows in order to make progress, compromise can't be treated as a dirty word. Compromises is she referring to? Well, she kind of alluded to it there. I mean, obviously, if you think back to months ago when these negotiations first started, I mean, there was talk of this uh, package being $6 trillion, and uh, that is something that obviously didn't happen. Then we got down to like $3.5 trillion, and then now it's down to about $1.75, uh, just under two. Uh, so, you know, whether it's the price tag, whether it's some elements in the bill, you know, paid leave at one point was out of the White House's framework, and then Speaker Pelosi. Pelosi got it back in, and now you've got Senator Manchin who wants to take it back out. So, you know, there's been a lot of wrangling and arm twisting over whether certain provisions are going to stay or go, whether that's immigration, whether that's issues dealing with state and local taxes. Uh, those are all things that are still under discussion and under review by the Senate parliamentarian. But in terms of compromise, the main compromise they need right now, the White House especially, is from Senator Joe Manchin, who President Biden has been talking to uh, over the past week. And and thus far, you know, the Senator Manchin doesn't seem to be budging in terms of his position on being ready to actually vote on this package. So, uh, and he indicated to reporters yesterday the White House isn't necessarily moving to his position on things. He's expressed a lot of concerns about uh, the impact this package could have on inflation, the economy, uh, et cetera. So uh, those types of conversations continue, and that ultimately is the compromise that the White House and some Senate Democrats want to try to move this package forward before the holidays. Nicole Kellyan, thank you. You bet.